So what does it mean to be loyal? Certainly we can pick out loyal people from people that lack loyalty. Let's go young boys. Can't wait for this season to get started. Hey, I thought you were a Liverpool fan. Oh, let's go Liverpool. You know that's my team. It's always been my team. All right, uh, so who do you have in the World Cup then? Ireland, it's gotta be. We're gonna do it this year. I don't know, they haven't been playing that well. Do you think they're gonna even qualify? Australia's my squad, this is our year. Same situation, man. I think uh, they might not qualify either. It's gonna be tough. Germany, defending champs, we got it. But what does it actually mean to be loyal? How do we define it? To answer this question, we'll look at a preliminary definition of loyalty put forward by philosopher Josiah Royce. That preliminary definition is the willing and practical and thoroughgoing devotion of a person to a cause. So what I wanna focus on in this video is breaking that definition down, explaining all of the parts. So the first component of this definition is that in order to be loyal to a particular cause, that cause has to be accepted willingly by the person. So Royce doesn't add too much in terms of clarification of willingness, but we have some ideas about what would count as a willing cause to which we're loyal to and one that we maybe serve but don't do so willingly. If you want to be loyal to some cause, you can't be coerced into its service or forced into it. Uh, an example would be um, the difference between enlisting in the military as opposed to being drafted uh, against your will into the military. Another example might be the difference between um, really wanting to play a particular sport as a child versus your parents forcing you to play that particular sport because they find that sport admirable or desirable or there's something they want you to succeed in. I suppose a third example has to do with employment. If you are working a job because you need to in order to earn income to survive, well, you wouldn't be able to claim that you're loyal to the cause of that job because you're forced into this particular employment in order to survive. Whereas if there's a job you're passionate about, you find the work itself intrinsically good or the things that you accomplish worthwhile, and you aren't forced into this activity, then yeah, you could be loyal to whatever ends the job is accomplishing. Second, Royce not only says that loyalty needs to be the willing devotion to a cause, but also needs to be the practical devotion to a cause. So this means a couple things. The first thing it kind of tells us is that when we're loyal to a particular cause, that influences our action. And so you can't be loyal to a particular cause just because you feel it or say it or want to believe you're loyal to that thing. And so if I say I'm loyal to a particular political party, but and I really feel this, I feel it strongly, but I never do anything. I never vote for that party. I don't you know, go out and try to push forward their ideals or the things that that party stands for. Then Royce would say that while you might feel that you are loyal, you're not actually being loyal because you lack the practical dimension to loyalty, which is acting in a way in service to a, to a particular cause. Royce also adds that this action can't be any action. The action needs to be self-controlled or self-directed. So it wouldn't be an action, let's say, where I'm just I have a natural impulse to commit that particular action. So we can't, let's say, be loyal to our breathing or our heart beating. This is something that we have no control over. Instead, when we're loyal to a cause, this action is self-directed. We look to the cause to determine how we should behave. Another way of thinking about it is what is the driving force behind one's action in service of a cause? If the driving force is just the biological urge or is the result of training that you have no control over, then this would not be an example of the practical action required to serve a cause. On the other hand, if your action is directed by the cause itself, you think about what the cause or the thing that you wish to make a reality is and say, well, this thing itself is admirable and I wish to instantiate that in the world and I'm going to direct my action in order to make that real that possibility a reality this would be the type of controlled action 
that Roy says is involved when one is loyal to some cause or purpose. So again, Roy says that loyalty is the willing and practical and thoroughgoing devotion of a person to a cause. So let's look at that thoroughgoingness part. Now, some of the things Roy says concerning the thoroughgoingness makes you think that it has to be the most important thing. But I think we can kind of give Royce a little bit more of a charitable reading. He says at the more extreme end that you have to be willing to die for your particular cause. But I think the more moderate reading would be to say that you can only be loyal to something that has some significance to you, that's important to you in some way, shape, or form, such that the failure to realize that particular cause to which you're loyal to it would amount to some kind of loss on your end. So an example of this would be, let's say I have a penny, a single penny in my pocket. Now, I would say that a penny doesn't have a lot of worth to me. Now, of course, many pennies do, but the single penny isn't something I can be loyal to because it doesn't have a great amount of significance. It's not something I'd be willing to fight for. If a robber came up to me, I would give it up because my life is more important. And so if I were to lose it, there wouldn't be this great loss that I feel. Now, on the other hand, let's say my family's well-being or their com my commitment to their continued development is something that's important to me. It is something I'd be willing to fight for or die for. Or uh, the more moderate reading, it would there would be a significant loss felt on my part if it were taken away. So this is the thoroughgoingness component of Royce's notion of loyalty. Another feature of Royce's definition of loyalty is that I can't be committed to, I can't be loyal to specific things that are already real. Um, instead, I have to be committed to, let's say, possible states that I'm trying to bring into reality. So an example would be I can't be committed to the American flag or the collection of individuals found in the United States or any country for that matter. Instead, I can only be committed to, let's say, the principles upon which it's founded. So I could be committed to increasing liberty in the United States or some country. And so what I'm trying to do here is I'm committed to the realizing liberty in the country, some possible state that I could achieve through my willing, thoroughgoing, and practical action. So another example concerning, let's say, specific individuals. I cannot be loyal, according to Royce, to specific people. I can't be loyal to, let's say, my daughter, my parents, my wife. Instead, I can only be committed to things like their increased happiness or their increased education or their sense of security. In this case, what I'm trying to do in my willing, thoroughgoing, and practical action is to preserve into the future these properties, their happiness, their education, or increase them. And so I'm trying to realize some possible state, not be committed to something that's already existent. Now, I can want to preserve those things, but I can't be committed to them as mere things alone. I can only be committed to them or loyal to them as causes or purposes. The final part of Royce's definition of loyalty I want to consider concerns being committed to a cause. Now I want to make two points concerning this particular component. The first is that when you are loyal to a cause, according to Royce, then you need to take the value of that cause that you're committed to or you're tr that you're trying to make a reality to have objective value. That is, you need to take that cause not to be merely personal, but have value independent of your valuing it. The second component concerns what Bryce will say is, uh, I don't know, we'll call it the social unification component. And with that, if you're loyal to a cause, then in principle, other individuals have to be capable of being loyal to that cause. So it has the power, at least, to unite multiple individuals together to serve some purpose or cause. By your powers combined. So those are the two components, the objective value component and the social unification component. So concerning the objective value component, Ray says that when you're loyal to a cause, you have to take the value of that cause to be greater than you. And so when we're committed to a cause, we're committed to something that's bigger than ourselves or greater than ourselves. And so what Royce wants to make clear 
is that the cause has value not because we value it. So we could remove ourselves from the equation. And when we're committed to a cause, we take our commitment to be commitment to something that has value even if we didn't exist. So some examples of things I take to have objective value and thus you could potentially be loyal to would be, let's say, the well-being or happiness of my community. This is something I take to have significance, such that if my community were harmed in some way, shape, or form, I would take it to be, you know, a bad thing that happened. Another thing that has significance to me is the well-being of my family. This is something I could be, and am in fact, loyal to and uh, would be willing to fight for. So these would be things that I take to have objective value or take to be objectively good. That is, they have goodness to them or value to them even if I did not exist, even if I didn't actually value them per se. So what's important here is to note that the thing doesn't actually have to be objectively good. You don't have to know it's objectively good. It doesn't actually have to have objective value. In order to be loyal to that thing though, you need to take that thing or believe that thing to have value independent of your existence. The second component of being committed to a cause is the social unification component. For that, Roy says that the cause to which we are committed to, willingly, thoroughgoingly, practically, is one that others can, at least in principle, also be committed to. The idea here is that this particular cause has the power to link our wills together, to tie us together in a way that we are all committed to something that is bigger than each individual person that is attempting to serve that thing. So examples might include things like the well-being of a community. It can be my particular cause that I'm trying to enact that more people are happy in a particular society, but others could adopt the same cause as well. So our wills can be linked in the realization of the same thing that we're trying to achieve. Another example could be the increased liberty of a particular community. I want people to exercise, be able to exercise their freedom in a more concrete way. Or the increased intelligence or knowledgeability of a community. I could want to improve education in a society. And in principle, others could take that particular cause as their own. So all of these examples would meet the social unification requirement. So that's Royce's preliminary definition of loyalty. It's the willing and practical and thoroughgoing devotion or commitment of a person to a cause. Insofar as it's willing, it's something that we do freely. Insofar as it's practical, it relates to action rather than mere emotion. Insofar as it's thoroughgoing, it ha the cause itself has significance to us. And insofar as we're committed to a cause, the cause that we're committed to is one that has value greater than ourselves that we take to be objective, that other individuals can in principle also be committed to so we can be bound together in a community in service of that cause. And insofar as we're committed to a cause, it's not a mere thing alone, but some possibility that we're trying to make a reality.